Good morning, folks. Uh, I wouldn't say so much a good morning, though, honestly, as a um, been a heck of a week. Uh, I lost Judd last week, and um, I spent <laughs> I spent enough time last week really coming to terms with that and having a hard time. So I want this video to, to not be uh, anything other than a wonderful, happy remembrance of, of what an awesome shop dog he was and a companion to me and my family. But here's the thing that really rocked my world. For all of you out there that have pets or dogs, um, especially shop dogs, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but what Judd also was, um, was he was the start of this journey. Uh, and that's, I think, what really made it hard for me, but also one, wonderful to reminisce and some really good takeaways from the last week or two. So when I grew up here in Janesville, Ohio, I grew up spending a lot of time on a farm. My grandfather was a steel fabricator, had a fabrication business, a World War II veteran who I think, uh, as part of that experience, having served uh, in the Marine Corps and on Okinawa, kind of realized that at 21 to be back out of the war and alive, um, that, that you've got to do something with your life now and move on and um, you know it makes him really thick-skinned and it brought out some pretty terrible attributes in him that made him tough and difficult but also wonderful wonderful so um, I used to shoot a lot with him and had the chance to shoot competitively for my high school team which is funny to say also because I think that's probably uh, unfortunately a bit of a bygone era and then had this idea for long-range shooting where I wanted to build this target and this target was um, electromechanical had fabricated parts, machine parts, circuit boards, and you know I was not really capable of, of building this thing. And we had found an engineer to help us. And I was now I had graduated college and was living in New York City, trying to do this on the side. And um, had, that's when the engineer that we hired brought in the machine shops and other vendors that he knew uh, to help us build this prototype. And that was the first time in my life. I'm actually gonna walk over here. I want to show you guys a part first time in my life that I realized what machining was. And I knew you could drill steel, but like I didn't realize that you could precision machine steel. I didn't know what that was. And, and similarly, you know, I had shot firearms my whole life, but had never really thought, well, how is a Remington 700 bolt machined or, or made? I just didn't know. Um, and this is the part that started it all. Um, this is a part from that original design of the strike mark target where I thought, this thing is crazy. It just looks over complicated. Uh, and this is the original print from that that we leave hanging in our uh, hallway here, both as a memento to the story in a good way, but also as the kind of reminder of um, sometimes you've got to bring your own, you know, version of something to the table as an entrepreneur to realize that um, it's not you need to find people around you that help you, but also realize you got to make your own decisions. And the decision here was I got to get smarter on machining to figure out how to make this part way simpler. And, that part ended up getting made out of a saw cut piece of half inch square aluminum that had a couple of basic features in it, like, you know, 5% as complicated as that part was. So um, where that puts us in the story related to Judd is I was in New York City and I had my little tag, but I wanted a Tormach in the worst way. That was such a big step up. The, the uh, work envelope size, the capability and the material removal rates and the TTS interchangeable tooling and my wife and I were just married and I convinced her to move out to the suburbs without a kid, which is like nobody does that in New York. You always leave the city when you have a kid. I didn't have a kid. Um, simply to buy a Tormach, uh, you know, find a house with a basement that had access to where I could get a garage or walk out basement and put a Tormach in there. And we did it. Honestly, the, the, the rest of it has been an absolutely wonderful journey. Uh, really, I can't say that enough. Um, and right when we moved out to the burbs, um, partly because frankly my wife didn't want to start a family just yet. I was kind of ready, but um, she reminded me of this last week. Uh, I thought, she thought, well, let's get a dog. And I had met a um, gentleman actually at a gun store in New York, also kind of unusual, who ended up being the owner of Judd's biological father. It was a Vishla breed, and I didn't know a lot about Vishlas, but the more I learned, wonderful dogs, you know, caring, intelligent, very much like Velcro dogs. They love being close to you and loyal. I really quickly developed a soft spot for Vishlas, and we got a, a we got a, a Vishla. We named him Judd, and kind of a weird thing, I guess. Maybe for some folks don't know, um, he's named Judd after the contemporary minimalist artist Donald Judd. So. Um, I really like contemporary art. I remember seeing artworks by Donald Judd in New York City 
and one of them, my sister and I were walking around these galleries, one of them was this beautiful piece and it said, um, baked enamel on aluminum. And I was like, what is that? The paint, the texture, the, the perfectness of it, it just looked beautiful and awesome. And I couldn't figure out, this is probably like 2005, what is baked enamel on aluminum? Like what kind of paint is that? Well, it's an artist's way of saying powder coating. Uh, really, I felt like kind of silly after I figured that out. Now, granted, I didn't know what powder coating was at the time, but I just kind of laughed at like how they're sp how they're spinning, you know, this basic like industrial technique into something super fancy. Um, anyway, I loved Donald Judd's artwork to this day, and uh, was happy to name my dog after Donald Judd. Um, but really, what mattered to me was that Judd was with me from the beginning. He spent, I mean, I'm gonna say hundreds, maybe thousands of hours with me. Uh, mostly in my New York basement at the time, developing products, the strike mark products, GoPro mounts, job shopping work. I have this wonderful video of him sitting on my lap watching, I think this is back in the Sprout Cam days, watching a tool path go back and forth. Um, he had this chair right next to me that he would just sit at for, for hours, all into the night, like just always right there. He would stand on my workbench. You know, you grow very fond in a, in a close bond. And when we would travel, he, he was inseparable. Like there's a great picture of us sleeping, taking a nap together on a couch. Uh, just really loved him like that. Uh, and then also this is a side of me that just is so energetic and passionate about not just manufacturing and CNC machining, but making stuff. Uh, and I think the Judd Treat Machine might be the best example of that. And probably one of the best projects I've ever made in my life. It was Raspberry Pi, it was Arduinos, it was machined parts, it was interactive, it was digital. And um, I ha cobbled it together, you know, not having any formal training, just figuring this stuff out. And that's what this world's all about. That's what this life's all about. And, you know, if and when I stop doing this or this, you know, YouTube channel ceases to be, I hope that is the uh, takeaway that have, makes other folks' lives better, is that ability to encourage and inspire and educate and um, just make you guys figure out that it's pretty cool. You can figure out how to do a lot of things out there. And the Judd Treat Machine was... Uh, this device, we actually still have it, I think, in here. Hasn't, hasn't been plugged in in years. Basically, it would make a noise, like a little back and forth rattle that would trigger Judd. Like it quickly became this response where he knew he was getting a treat. And it would rotate an auger and dump them from the hopper into the, or from the storage bin thing in the device into this little hopper. And then it would rotate them down and dump them down. But what was really cool was, here it is, there's a web camera on it. And so once the treats were dumped, it would take a picture with this webcam driven by a, a Raspberry Pi, and it would send a picture back to whomever emailed in saying, I want to give Judd a treat. And it would send that picture back to them so they could see a picture of Judd getting the treat. And that to me was this crazy cool kind of like next level interactive thing. And we just, we just made this. Um, I don't remember exactly how many uh, emails Judd got, but it was in the thousands and Google quickly sent us like an email, like a kind of a, Hey, you created a server farm spam system. We're shutting you down. I kind of laughed cause I was like, are you serious? So we had to switch the email to a new email and fast forward. Judd was there when we moved from New York to Ohio. And that was a huge moment. My first shop was on our family farm and Judd came to work with me every day. And he did so for years and it was just me. I love that idea of having a uh, companion, a shop dog, and, a, and a, a buddy that was right there with you. The first shop didn't have a bathroom. It had a wood stove for a heater, and it would be so cold on the winter. Judd would wear this coat. He would actually get up on the table. And there's another great video of him putting his head on top of my hand as I'm trying to model in, I don't know what software it was. Maybe it was Fusion at the time, but it may have even been SolidWorks. Uh, and just like, just heartwarming and, and fond of memories of that. Um, and then on, on the kind of a uh, more difficult note, um, Judd is the reason I'm standing in this building right now. My um, hero, my idol at the time, my grandfather had encouraged me, welcomed me, insisted that I come back to the family farm and start start there, start my shop there, keep the overhead low. I, he had a thousand square feet in this industrial building. We had a tractor we could unload stuff with. Like it was a huge upgrade from a basement in suburban New York. Um, and, and so I welcomed that opportunity. And a couple years into that, you know, you kind of realize that was a mistake. Um, he, he, that was his workshop and I should have, I don't know if I should have realized it, but um, it didn't make sense. And, and what happened, I think I've mentioned this a few times before quietly, but um, he kind of attacked Judd. He kind of went after Judd 
um, and it didn't hurt him, luckily, but it was clear that, okay, John, you got to get out of here. And that was, you know, kind of one of those low moments in life where you're, you're upset, you're torn, you know, I'm, I'm, my business is being hurt because I have to figure out how to get out of here real quick. And, and it, you know, this guy's my idol. Like, what do you do to that? And uh, certainly a huge part of that was also his age and um, whatever mental incapacity, like, faculties were compromised and so forth. Um, I don't want folks thinking that he was truly a bad person like that. But um, so I quickly had to get out of here and we actually ended up in a renting a shot space next door. I'll come back to that in a second um, for a few months. And when we moved in, Judge right there, there's a great picture of him sitting on top of a bunch of plate steel as we're moving in. And so when I was next door, I saw that this building was available for rent and I approached the family that owned it and asked them about buying it and the rest is history there. And, and Judd was here for years and I think one of the fondest things for me, we threw up on Instagram last week uh, when I knew the end was near, was that uh, there were so many folks that had the chance to visit our shop uh, and had fond memories of meeting Judd, taking a picture with Judd. When we had our last open house in this room, there's a picture of me back on that wall. He was going nuts that day, loved it, but like, kind of over simulating and he found me and he just jumped right up on my lap in the middle of this kind of Q and a session, which was wonderful. Um, and the folks that had attended our training classes just, you know, loved Judd and, and that's really, truly wonderful. So I want to say thank you to everybody. It's, it was, it was a hard week for sure. I, th I think anyone that's lost a pet can probably relate to that. I'd lost some growing up, but never one that was my own. And I, I didn't deal with it super well. I really didn't. And if you listened to the bomb last week, you probably heard that. Um, and Friday w was the end. And honestly, in a unexpected way, that was easier than I thought and a relief. And uh, he turned 11 uh, in April. And I remember joking with my wife that, man, man I'm gonna be a mess when Judd um, goes, we always thought he would live till 14. Heck, both of Judd's parents are still alive. Um, we pretty sure he had a cancer and he couldn't keep food down, couldn't keep weight on. And um, we, we tried everything we could with, with the vet, with steroids, with medicine, with care. Um, and actually the steroids worked at first, which was kind of encouraging. And then, and then they didn't. Um, I was, I don't, say, I don't know if it was a denial, but I was really thinking like, well, everything that he's su not suffering, but um, incurring could be just because he can't keep food down and keep weight on. So if it's just a, um, a GI issue, or the, the doctor even looked at his teeth to make sure he didn't have a rotten tooth that was stopping him from eating. Um, I was I was hopeful and desperate because I wanted him to get through this. And uh, toward the end of middle and end of last week, he faded f even faster than he had. I mean, really quick. And so we ended up putting him down Friday afternoon, and um, that was really hard. And uh, we went down and we buried him on the farm, and I'm much more at peace with it now. So. I don't want to get, like I said, I don't want to just turn this video into a uh, sympathy or sad video. I want it to be happy about the memories we have. And I'll tell you, if there's one thing that this experience makes me take away from, it's, it's what you often hear when folks um, lose something or find that there's a journey coming to an end is, oh my cow, where'd all the time go? I mean, Judd Jud did live 11 wonderful years and I spent almost every day with him, but um, it still feels like it's a blink of an eye. And so, what it makes me think about is, um, you know, first off, some of the hardest lessons in my life turns into wonderful opportunities. The kind of, um, actually, a friend just posted this on Instagram. I think it's worth sharing. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase, you know, uh, two kids are locked in a room and it's full of uh, manure. One kid is just complaining that he's full of manure. The other kid's happy and they're like, why are you happy? And the kid's like, if this room's full of manure, there's a pony in here somewhere. So it's kind of learning to make the most of that. And, uh, and the other thing is trying to, you know, balance how you live in the past, present, and future. Um, you know, you know the, the windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror to look forward, but we aren't who we are without the past. And I think there is a point in appreciating that and allowing it to influence you. And, you know, I still feel young and, and full of energy and um, notwithstanding the, the uh, last week kind of put me down, but like, I still got a lot in me on the flip side. I know I'm going to look back when I'm 45, 50, whatever age and realize where the time go and did I do what I, enough what I want. And so, you know, the, for, to me, it's just this, the sense of bookending, you know, when I, when we got Judd, we didn't have kids. We were, I didn't have any business. I didn't know anything about machining. And, and now I do, I have a wonderful shop and we have this wonderful team and I love what I do. And we have, you know, 
uh, our story's in a much different place and uh, a wonderful place. And so it just makes you really appreciate that and think of what, what, what you want out of the next two, five, 10 years, et cetera. And I, I, hope, um, I hope that serves as a tool or a source of inspiration for others out there uh, as much as it has for me. Uh, and honestly, a big thank you. Um, I have always, or certainly in the last five years, had sort of mixed feelings about what this YouTube thing is um, because it's changed so much. But what I know I love, what I always come back to is it's a wonderful way to share knowledge and passion and education, um, notwithstanding all the quirky commercial conflicts that you, know, you see out there of, of influencer marketing and so forth. But I do it because I love it. I do it because I want to share it with you. I want to share this story. Um, and, and Joe was a big part of that story. So to everyone that uh, would comment, I mean, <laughs> To everyone that would comment when they'd see Judd in the background or see him in his cozy cave bed, thank you. Um, I'm also laughing there for a second because uh, in a really weird turn of events, we ended up having a New York Times article that we were referenced in it, um, and Judd made the New York Times. That's pretty cool. Avishla from a machine shop in Zanesville, Ohio made the New York Times. So with that, folks, seriously, a sincere thank you. Um, thanks for all the one wonderful memories. Go hug your pet. Take care. See you soon.